Hello and welcome to Property Box News, I'm Simon Evison. First up in this edition, a look at some of the latest changes in buy to let mortgages and then I'll take a look at a new guide for landlords to stay on the right side of the law with health and safety. First of all, good news for the older investor. TMW has scrapped the upper age restriction for experienced landlords. Currently, the lender's maximum lending age is 70, but having decided that cases from older borrowers who have long invested in the buy-to-let sector offer no more risk than younger ones, TMW scrapped the maximum age restriction as of April 18th. Fleet Mortgages has cut rates across its fixed rate products by 10 basis points. In terms of its standard range, the buy to let lenders two year fixed rate deals now start from 2.99% at 75% loan to value, while its five year fixed rate deals again at 75% LTV now start from 3.75%. As far as its limited company range, Fleet is now offering a rate of 3.97% on its 5-year fixed rate deal at 65% loan to value. Its 75% loan to value 5-year fixed rate product has been reduced to 3.89%. Fleet also cut the 5-year fix on its HMO range to 4.09%. Oldermore has cut rates on its buy-to-let mortgage range for company landlords, ensuring they are now aligned with the buy-to-let deals offered to individuals. The specialist lender has also slashed rates for multi-unit freehold and HMOs with rates starting from 4.38% for a two-year fix at 75% loan-to-value and for, this is for landlords acquiring new property or remortgaging existing investments. They've also cut variable rates across its buy-to-let range with rates starting from 3.3%. To 8%. Paragon now, they have launched a new range of buy to let mortgage products for portfolio landlords for a limited time only. The mortgage deals, which include a free mortgage valuation and up to £500 cash back, are available for purchase and remortgage. Among the new products is a two year fixed rate at 3.4%, up to 75% loan to value, and a two year fixed rate at 3.6%, and that's for those borrowing up to 75% loan to value. And this is particularly on HMO and multi-unit properties. The limited edition range also caters for landlords looking for longer term cost, certainty, and includes a five year fixed rate at 3.74, on 75% loan to value and there's a five year fixed rate at 3.84% and that again up to 75% loan to value and this is on HMO and multi-unit properties. When electrical wires were recently found exposed in a private rental property in Luton, the local authority decided to investigate further and found that the house's electricity meter had been tampered with and fire detection systems were not in place. Aliash Hussein, who owns the property, was handed a record £70,000 fine which should send a clear message to other rogue landlords who avoid the law that local councils will pursue anybody who lets substandard accommodation. So, how can we then protect ourselves and make sure we have all safety measures in place? Education and knowledge is obviously the key and a new guide recently published and released by the Electrical Safety Roundtable to help landlords meet their obligations ensures that tenants' lives are not put in danger due to unsafe accommodation. A number of documents are available for download on the ESR and Home Safety Guidance websites to make landlords aware of their responsibilities and it's there to help them prove that their properties are being adequately maintained. These include a home safety certificate, which is designed to provide an overview of the safety of the property and a list of current legal responsibilities in the private rented sector in England, Scotland and Wales. The site also provides a routine visual and operational checklist, and this does not replace a professionally prepared report that is recommended you carry out every five years, but it does allow an annual visual check of the electrical installations that are to be recorded. You can also find guidance on the website on how to complete such documents to ensure that even landlords without electrical training can spot potentially hazardous faults or damage. Find the latest documentation from the Electrical Safety Roundtable in the first link in, that's listed down below. 
And finally, a campaign to keep the name of a street has been victorious and the local council in Rowley Regis has dropped its plans to change the controversially named street. The original petition submitted to change the name had only 100 signatures, meanwhile the counter campaign to keep the historic name gained over 4,800. Local residents claim the name to be rude and that they are a laughingstock. A local historian, however, claims the name refers to a local mine. Another source says the name of the road may come from a bell attached to a hunting lodge belonging to King John in the 12th century. Either way, the name is staying. The name of the road? Bell End. That's all from me. See you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Goodbye.